Hello, my name is Glenn Dyer, and you are watching a dire situation. Today, I'm seeing Mother! Mother. You're supposed to shout it because it has an exclamation point at the end. At least that's how I'm interpreting it. Um. So, yeah. Huh. I know nothing about what happened in this movie. I've seen the trailer like three or four times in the theater. Not sure what happens in the movie. Not sure what happens in the trailer, to be honest. I've kind of forgotten. Uh, I, I, I know that... Uh, um, that Hunger Games lady is in there. Um, yeah. She... T she tends to be in these movies ever since, like, Joy. Um, I've noticed that she tends to like to be in these really pretentious, um, over-the-top films, so... I don't know, I'm not quite looking forward to that, but... Then again, I hear this movie is batshit insane. Actually, I hear... I haven't actually read, like, a proper review, I've just been, like, seeing reactions on Twitter. Essentially, the reactions to this movie are this is really arty farty bullshit, or that first group of people are really stupid. That seems to be the reaction here. So, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping just for a weird psychological shit and I'll be happy. Uh, just. How about the Bye Bye Man, except intentional? That'll be that'll be a good movie for me in, in terms of this. Uh, so, yeah, I I I I I hope it's crazy. I hope it's crazy in a good way. So let's get to it. Okay, so before I get any more into what I feel about this movie, let me first. Um, let me first explain something to you about this other movie that I know, that I know really well, that I watched a lot as a kid. It's a movie called Madhouse. It's a comedy film from, I think, the 90s. Um, the plot is essentially these two, um, these two people, um, um, they're a loving couple, right, and they're living in the suburbs in their beautiful house. They both have great jobs and they're enjoying every day. And then suddenly, um, the, his, his uh, um, I think, oh, what is it? His brother comes to visit, and he brings his family from New Jersey. And, you know, they're just being intrusive and stuff. It's just that annoying, oh, we have family over, that nobody really likes them, but, you know, they're, they're just there to experience California. But then, through a series of convoluted events, more and more and more people keep coming over to the house, until the house is filled with like 20 different people and it's driving every it's driving the main characters insane their house is getting destroyed from all this stuff and like there's people living in tents in the backyard and cooking with like fire and stuff and it's and just gets more and more silly until it just builds up to a climax where just everything goes to shit it's a hilarious movie pretty underrated honestly so, but here's the thing. This movie, in a way, has an extremely similar plot. But it's t but instead it is dealt with very seriously, and its tone is very different. It's more of a psychological horror. But consequently, because its plot is so similar, I was laughing the entire time. I was stuffling myself, of course. There was only one moment where I accidentally did laugh out loud. Um, but, uh, and I'll get to that, but, like... I was just having... I found the whole movie hysterical. <laughs> what essentially happens... Now, bear in mind, psychological thrillers in general describing the plot doesn't necessarily tell you what the movie's about in a weird way. This is mostly about tone, symbolism, Things like that. Um, the movie, in truth, is more is more what you can interpret it to be. Um, mostly, I would say, social anxiety it plays a huge role in in this whole thing. Um, uh, uh, de definitely, definitely social anxiety. Uh, definitely um, mistrust. Um, 
the very notion of like putting your trust into someone um like a spouse things like that um this trust into society that that kind of thing it's kind of questioning all that um hell I, this movie but that that's just like the very top one there's a whole lot of layers to this i could probably write a full essay on why this movie demonstrates the need f the importance of property rights you know i could go into that but as in essence if you're just looking at this movie totally literally the plot is um um, Jennifer Lawrence and uh, her husband are um, st are staying in this house. Jennifer Lawrence has been renovating this guy's um, house from when he was young. The house burned down, but she's like reconstructed it herself and has been like rebuilding it. And the building is almost done. He's like a poet, so he pretty much just spends all his time just looking at, just trying to get inspiration. And then these people come, and then this person comes in, right? Um, and like he, he initially introduces himself as being looking for a bed and breakfast but turns out he's actually a big fan of the guy and then he brings his wife over right and this and more people start coming over and stuff and more people start coming over and until eventually I don't even want to spoil it but things get insane in regards to people coming over people taking things people destroying things like just people in their infinite chaos creating the most unfit to live scenario possible that's essentially the plot um and the part that made me laugh is at one point it got really intense so Jennifer Lawrence goes to pick up the phone and call someone, to call 911, and because people are scrambling to, like, steal stuff from the house, one dude just rips the phone off the wall, because it's, like, one of the wall phones, it just, he just rips the phone off the wall and, like, took it, and I, I, I couldn't help myself, I actually laughed out loud at that one. So, yeah, I, I found it hysterical, but, um, I can understand if you wouldn't. There is many creep, many, like... Instances of creepy imagery, um, very psychological, very cerebral stuff going on. As I said, ton of symbolism. So that's kind of, so the question really comes down to this in terms of like symbolism, the psychosis, in terms of building the mood, in terms of what does this mean? What does this mean? It essentially boils down to one question. Is the person making this smart or stupid? Is the movie really smart and you don't quite get it? Or is it really stupid and there's nothing to get? I am not the person to answer this. At all. It's been, what, four years and I still can't tell you if Lords of Salem is, like, really smart or really stupid. There's no way for me to tell you that. What I can say is that if you are into films that do not explain anything to you, that require you to figure things out for yourself, that um, are pretty much designed for you to kind of finger over and go, what does this mean? What does this mean? I think this is a symbol for this. I think this is a symbol for this person oppressing this. Uh, you know, you could... Great movie for that. Great movie for that. Probably the best one I've seen in a while. Um... Now, I'm personally leaning towards this is smart, just because the, the director has a um, reputation of being, of being more thoughtful than Rob Zombie does. Um, and this is definitely not, um, oh, what was that one movie, Black, um, <laughs> yeah, th this is definitely not that stupid movie with the eels and stuff that I reviewed last year, whatever it was called, that movie's, no, that wasn't last year, that was earlier this year, forget what it's called, look in, look in my database for some stupid movie, it had a convoluted title, I believe, but, yeah, it was, it, that movie was dumb, this movie it definitely has a lot more to it, um, but, in contrast to that, I can also understand how some people would be extremely frustrated by the fact that it doesn't tell you anything 
Like, even myself, there was times when I was just going, come on, man, just, can I get a hint of something? You know? So I can totally understand how, like, general audiences might just be kind of frustrated by it. And that's okay. But, you know, if you're in the movies where you like to, like, analyze it and stuff, great film for that. Great film. Highly recommended for that. Um, if you're looking for something a little more straightforward, this isn't for you. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, so until next time, I'm Glenn Dyer, and you have been watching The Dyer Situation. There you go.